This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining this session. So today we are here to chat with uh, my friend Bashir Ahmed. And uh, let me introduce first. So Bashir Ahmed uh, has uh, 16 years of uh, DBA experience and uh, in, in database management system and as well as in cloud. And uh, as a uh, proficient user of OEM, Bashir excels in, uh, in, in OEM capabilities to optimize database performance, automate routine tasks, and ensure the seamless function of critical system. And he has in-depth uh, knowledge of uh, various database platforms and uh, he has also the passionate about sharing the knowledge and uh, uh, nurturing the talent so that's why i bring him today uh, as a guest speaker to discuss about uh, his journey and also to discuss about the oem uh, importance for the dba and uh, he is uh, available on linkedin as well as on twitter so I will uh, share the link so you can connect uh, with him. Uh, so yes, Bashir, welcome. Thank you, Ahmad Bhai. Thank you so much for the welcome. So <clears throat> let me uh, first uh, personal question actually I'm asking. Uh, can you share a bit about your journey and how you became interested in working with database and cloud technologies? Uh, yeah, uh, my journey had been a little bit uh, interesting and challenging as well, since I was not from a technical background. So it was a very difficult for me to, uh, you know, get into the DBA field because the competition was very high. And uh, since I was from non-technical background, so obviously you can understand the, the fight would have been more in comparative uh, to, to other people. So. Uh, when I started learning DBA thing, I learned DBA and, and uh, after after you know fight for multiple months, I finally got offer uh, mm -hmm. for a DBA role. I started okay. my career as uh, you know I started with core DBA thing. So with time, I started gaining more and more knowledge. Then later, okay. uh, when I joined uh, another company, I got. The, the company had decided and they they dedicated a particular role to me uh, that i have to look into the oem okay by by that time i did not know what exactly the oem is okay then i started exploring and the moment i started exploring day by day my interest for oem started growing okay uh, then i discovered how it works and I spent more time on this technology. And uh, with time, I, I found that OEM is quite interesting. Okay, uh, It has a lot of things to explore, right? With my curiosity started growing because when, when the capability of OEM, you know, exposed what all I can do from OEM, you know, I can, I can clone database, I can patch database, I can monitor entire infrastructure of database be it oracle be it non-oracle things okay then mm -hmm. you know that attracts me a lot so i started spending more time on oem and then that is how my career started and came up to here okay, okay. so just uh, tell me about what is oem and what role does it play in managing oracle environments see uh, if we talk about oem um long back oracle had an idea that there should be a tool which should be able to monitor entire infrastructure because oracle is huge okay so earlier in earlier um, the dbs had only one option to monitor mm -hmm. their databases and host that was through scripts okay so that okay. was uh, os script that they deployed in case of uh, anything goes wrong or uh, threshold breaches and all that they used to get the error okay that is the only solution the dba had so oracle okay. came up with an idea that there should be a mechanism which should be able to monitor and manage the entire infrastructure then they came up uh, long back uh, 
with OEM 10, I guess. Okay, so 10 was very, okay. uh, very basic. 10 OEM 10 was very basic. It was just a bunch of URLs. Okay, you click on the URL to access one database and see things. That's it. Then 11G, they evolved with time. They came up to 11G. 11G had a little bit more functionality. At least um, you can see things at one place, right? That was they were combined, mm -hmm. but that was also a very, uh, very monotonous. Okay. okay. If you talk about from the DBS perspective, people go to uh, console, they just see things. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was not user friendly. The UI was not that appealing, right? So with mm -hmm. time, Oracle thought, okay, that time 11G uh, OEM, they were using application server. Oracle mm -hmm. application server they were using for the uh, for making it console and you know um, availability on the browser. So later okay. on they decided they, when they acquired web logic okay so BEA I guess yeah BEA is the name of the company from where they acquired um, web logic and, and since then they started using that web logic component in all their products. So 12C was the first version of OEM when they uh, used web logic and that time it was quite, you know, there was a huge difference from 11G and 12C. So many things was introduced and uh, UI was quite interesting uh, and that was quite appealing. 12C to 13C journey was, uh, you know, it took quite a long time, okay, because uh, Oracle does not release a new version until they have a lot of things to integrate in a package. Okay. So they, um, I guess it was 2015 or 16 when uh, they introduced web, uh, OEM 13.1, okay, mm -hmm. it, it has a lot of, you know, huge difference from 12C to 13C, they um, um, integrated a lot of things so many uh, capabilities to monitor and uh, you know uh, functionality mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. and 12 1 then 12 2 12 3 12 4 and currently we are using 12 point uh, th sorry 13 th uh, th 13.1 13.2 13, 13, 13 5 is the current version that we are using since 11g now 13.5 okay there is a huge um, things integrated in OEM, right? Now, if I talk about, talk about the current uh, utilization of OEM 13C, OEM can monitor anything. Anything, let's say Golden Gate, Microsoft SQL Server, DB2, okay? Talk about um, the functionality, it can clone your database, it can create a standby for you. So you, you don't have to, log into the server and do all the efforts that we do for creating a standby, taking the backup, right? And making a lot of uh, uh, DB parameter changes and, and configuration. Sorry, all to, uh, sorry to interrupt you, your camera is gone, Bashir. Can, can you check? Oh, that? sorry, okay. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, I was talking about the capabilities, right? So uh, using OEM now, we can uh, clone the database. We can patch the database. We can create standby. We can manage the standby. Standby. Let's say uh, a DBA performs the uh, standby uh, switchover or uh, conversion very frequently, right? So what they have to do, we have to log into the database on a putty session and do a lot of changes and convert the database to physical or standby. These all mm -hmm. things can be done with some some clicks of, you know, in OEM console. And the OEM is going to perform it all for you. You can so schedule what a job. Are the, uh, what are the main features and capabilities in OEM 13C, if we talk about? So main feature is, is let's say, um, you can you can manage your entire infrastructure on OEM, right? Main feature, if we say so, the feature is is not something which is there already, always. It is kind of evolving, right? Every time there's a new feature introduced from Oracle using a path set, right? So every every quarter or every six months, new features are introduced in OEM, right? So we cannot say like this is a feature, but it is evolving, right? Now we can 
earlier we we were able to monitor the databases in oem now we can monitor the database services as well right so this is a new feature now along with that we can monitor um, ebs we can monitor golden gate we can monitor extra data okay not just monitor we can maintain and perform you know and we can we can maintain and you know we can use it to perform any activity on these targets right mm -hmm. so these all features are there okay you can uh, uh, as i said we can clone the database and 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 all that we can schedule a job let's say you want to patch a database right on the weekend client had given you a dedicated time that on sunday this time we can do the patching on the database because we cannot do it on the uh, mm -hmm. on the weekdays suppose mm -hmm. you are not available on the weekend you have something you know um, scheduled or you have you are, you are committed for some some other task at the same time this patching is also scheduled so mm -hmm. what we can do we can there's an option in oem we can um, do analyze and all that while patching submit option before submit there's an option to schedule that particular job okay so you can schedule that job for sunday 10 am ist bst whatever you want you can schedule it after scheduling you can submit it so it's not going to be and, and also you can create a blackout during that particular time so that when you perform the database database when it goes down because for the patching it goes down it is going to send alert for that time you can you can schedule a blackout also and patching also at that particular time the job is going to be hit and that patching activity will be completed and your manual intervention is not required you are chilling with your friends oem is doing all these job for you okay. so these are the features okay so what are the what are uh, what how does oem help in managing and monitoring oracle database middleware and applications uh, that's right, because as I said, OEM has all this capability to uh, put, to perform all these all these tasks on behalf of the database, right? Mm -hmm. So, talk about middleware, talk about database. So, if a database, a, a DBA is there, DBA has to write uh, scripts on the OS level to monitor the web logic. Okay, it's not very easy for a database administrator to write all these scripts for different component database let's say one dba is um, good in database thing he is going to write a database script but other dba who has middleware um, you know speciality right he can write or may not write these scripts to monitor the web logic and other stuff right so there are a lot of things that a dba has right for xi data oda uh, EBS and all that. So who's going to write all these scripts for monitoring all these components, right? So we don't have to write it. It is always there in OEM. We just have to deploy the plugin to monitor all these components and, and it's all set. And it's just a matter of few clicks. So it's saving your time for a DBA. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's saving your time. It's making your life easier. Okay. You can monitor everything from one, one place. So that is all features for you yeah uh, so uh, so what uh, what are the key components uh, of uh, oem 13c architecture if we talk about uh, that's right because see uh, if we talk about the key components for oem for, for there so, so there are many dbas they may know very good oem and some people they may less or some people are quite new for OEM, right? So, so for everyone, the the component and the architecture of OEM, right? So, in order to install OEM, there are multiple things. First, we have we need to have a repository repository database. Database repository database is nothing but the Oracle RDBMS database that we use. So, first we have uh, we have a database one component. Second is OMS. Okay. OMS is Oracle Management Server. Then OMA, which is Oracle Management Agent, plugins, right? And uh, WebLogic is there, which is uh, consolidating everything and making you, uh, you know, making it available for you on the browser in a, in a proper GUI, right? So these are the main components. Oracle database and what it, what it makes a repository 
is some of the schemas when we install OMS, it creates some schemas like sysman, sysman underscore ro and all that. A lot of schemas it's going to install in the database that makes it a repository database for OMS. So everything which is uh, collected from agent or any or or the from OMS components, that information is going to be stored in Oracle database repository repository database right so that is the omr which is called oracle management repository then oms oracle management server agent plugin right and jvmd java java virtual machine uh, diagnostic so there is one component that is integrated to uh, diagnose the uh, the issues or something which is happening in oem so these are the components that that they work together so mm -hmm. for a DBA, uh, it's it's not easy to understand everything. Let's say one DBA is there we, who is very good um, with database, right? But he does not have information about web logic because if you go and troubleshoot issues of OEM, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can look into. Uh, for, I'm I'm just talking about a core DBA, right? They just mm -hmm. have no idea of. Uh, yeah, mostly DB has no idea of OEM. Mostly, uh, I think 80% people not working in OEM. I think. Uh, yeah, possibly, possibly. Even if they know, they are they just know little things, little things. Means if the alert ha happens, they are going to look into the OEM and see why the alert has happened, and they're they're going to fix it on the database level, and then OEM alert is clear. That's it. Okay, so it so for them, uh, the it is a tool that is going to send the alert if the file system crosses or table space crosses. That's it, and they uh, limit their knowledge until that place only. As I said, OEM is much more than that. It has lot of lot of capabilities, so you have to explore it. It has web logic also, right? So uh, uh, a DBA has to learn a little bit of web logic also because when it comes to troubleshooting, let's say OEM is working for you, it's well enough. What if it goes down? In some time, okay, let's say it's not coming up. You started troubleshooting. How we are going to troubleshoot only until unless you don't know how web logic works. Getting my point? So mm -hmm. that is that is something uh, required to learn for 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 those DBS who are still to learn OEM. So, so yeah, web logic so is must. Web yeah. logic is must for OEM uh, working. Very basic knowledge, not not deep. At least we should know that what is dependent on what. Let's say. We are trying to start OMS, and it says uh, the uh, the um, WLS is not coming up. Okay, so you should know like what is WLS? Why is it not coming up? At least you should go to WLS log. You should know where the w WLS log is created. You should know where to uh, find that WLS log, and what all components we can see from the log that can help me figure out the issue with WLS. Because until and unless WLS is up. OMS is not going to up and then OM, they are in the sequence. So WLS is the first thing. So uh, basic knowledge is required of web logic so that at least you, you, you can uh, you know, troubleshoot if the issue happens in your real life in, in your environment. OK, so uh, for DBA, the main uh, performance is very crucial. Actually, everybody is asking for that. So how OEM uh, 13C help in performance monitoring and tuning according to you yeah that's that's a quite interesting question actually um, let's say few other transactions or ex extensibility of oem is is a later thing right but this thing is something a dba is interacting on a daily basis right if you are a dba in your environment you are going to get um, the the performance issue every now and then so in a traditional way of you know troubleshooting the uh, the performance issue or uh, performance tuning and all that, what you used to do, you had to you had a lot of uh, scripts, queries that you run to find out the bottleneck of the issue, right? So many things you have to run hundreds of you know scripts to find a bottleneck, and then you tune. You have to run the analyzer and all that. And then you come to the uh, to the final point that what you have to do to fix the performance, right? So many steps are involved. Now OEM, what it gives to you simply, if you go to OEM console, go to the database, 
in a very good graphical way, it's going to present you the performance of the database, the CPU utilization spike, memory utilization, this user session, right? Who is creating the log and all that. Just you can you can see everything on one page, okay? And you don't have to analyze a lot. You, mostly, 90% cases, you can find out the root cause on the first page. And if required, let's say uh, OEM is itself capable of, you know, analyzing the query for you. It can analyze the query and it can give you the recommendation that the, create a um, index or do these things to fix your query. You can go and fix that. So within five minutes or 10 minutes, you can 90% of cases, you can five, five in 10 years, you can easily find out the bottleneck. You can find the solution. You can, you can implement the solution as well. 10% mm -hmm. is uh, different cases in the exception cases when you know you really need a lot of things so you can generate the awr and addm report and all that to, to compare but you can do all these things on oem console create the awr addm compare it and all that and fix it so it is making your life quite easier for those people who are especially working in the performance tuning also okay so that is a kind of boom for okay. the people yeah okay so uh, any uh, any recent updates or enhancement in oem 13c as you said it is very powerful yeah it is powerful exactly but uh, as i said it is uh, quite evolving it is evolving with new features day by day right now i can see oem can monitor your entire um, uh, cloud infrastructure as well so earlier oem was monitoring the on prem bare metal and all that now OEM is quite capable of monitoring your entire um, cloud infrastructure. You can uh, provision a database in cloud. Okay, so there is a special uh, plugins that would be required to configure some some some. There are configuration steps that and and it would need some uh, you know OCID from the cloud and all that your target information to configure it. Once it is configured, you can perform all these actions from from OEM itself. Though, if we talk about uh, cloud uh, infrastructure, you can you you have all these UI in cloud console also, right? You can perform it all from the lo from logging to the OCI cloud, and um, and do whatever you want. Let's say if you want to uh, uh, rise up the CPU count for your database, let's say the load has increased on your environment on your database, and you need more CPU, you can go to the cloud and dynamically you can uh, bump up your CPU count, right? So, yeah. so all these things you can do. Though Oracle has also provided you a UI for maintaining all these things for cloud infrastructure. Similarly, you can do all these steps from OEM also. So choice is yours. But yeah, that functionality is still uh, there in OEM and it's available for use. So according to you, uh, what is the best uh, tips or? Uh... Uh, you can say practices uh, which DBA can use uh, OEM 13C in their uh, enterprise environment. Best practices. Okay, so uh, let's say um, I have already seen multiple uh, uh, client also, right? So we we support multiple clients. Okay, so the client have their own DBAs also. Right. So most of the times they are not well enough. You know they are not. Uh, uh, as good as compared to you because you are people we work in service industry right so we have multiple clients we handle and and we work very frequently so obviously by you know, it's kind of nature that people uh, the people who more practice they get more knowledge or more experience and the client on the client side if the dba is dedicated to one database they are not that you know brush up kind of thing but in a bigger environment, I have seen the client DBS are very, 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 uh, uh, you know, experienced and talented. So I can share you one experience. One of my client, their DBS are very deep knowledge. Okay, 25 years of experience kind of thing. Then what I noticed, they had created OEM their own way. They have modified like anything. Okay. For example, I for example, I give you. They have modified their OEM this way that let's say there are three different shifts, right? Because 
in DBA, we provide 24 seven, <laughs> right? Three different shifts, three different, you know, team for database for production. At this shift, who is in the rota? OEM has that knowledge based on that rota. It is going, to, let's say the DB is down. It is directly identifying who is in the rota and he's going to call you directly. Let's say, uh, Ahmad, but you are in the second shift, right? Mm -hmm. In the second shift, the error happens, DB goes down. OEM is going to check in the rota who is in the second shift. DBA, Ahmad, Bhai is the primary DBA. Secondary is this guy. Th and and the third person is this. If not, Ahmad is reached. Then second person is that. X, if not, X is reached. Y is, should be reached. Okay. OEM itself is going to call you Ahmad directly. In your shift, you are the person. Uh, yeah, please take care of it. If Ahmad does not respond to that call, it's going to call X person. If X person is not going to uh, respond to the call, then it's going to call the Y person. So this level of customization has happened in OEM. So as I said, it is already a very sophisticated software. Apart from that, it gives you a scope to extend it up to your willingness. What all you want to work with, you can go and do that. So that is the next level of enhancement of OEM. Okay, But if you talk about people, uh, you know, uh, how, how they want to start, they should start uh, monitoring and performing some of these steps using OEM so that you get more confidence on OEM functionality. At least you can do it in your personal machine. Then later on, you can try. Let's say if it's a non-prod database and you and and your organization or the client want you to convert the database from standby to physical uh, physical standby to snapshot, you can perform all these steps using OEM and make your life easier. Yeah. So that's all. So that's why OEM is uh, means importance for DBA. We should learn. <laughs> it, it is now. It is now. For example, let me let me tell you. Nowadays, companies have identified the potential of OEM, right? And nowadays, they have started, you know, um, creating openings for OEM speciality, right? Yeah, OEM Only DBA. For, OEM DBA. Yeah. Earlier, it was required as a as an add-on, but now they have started creating opening for OEM DBS speciality and all that because they know that this is something a, a kind of profile that we need in our organization. They now know the potential, right? Every interview, people even if you are going for a normal database interview, they are going to ask you OEM things. Mm -hmm. So that is the change has happened in DB industry. Okay. So, uh, what is difference between 12C and 13C OEM? If we can ask. Uh, yeah, as I said, <clears throat> the difference is the evolvement, right? When it was 2014, 15, right? It was 12C was more than enough, and people were very good. They, they were very happy with whatever they had, okay? Because it was making their life easy. Uh, they were able to monitor entire infrastructure, entire grid and everything from one point. And, and we as a DBA, we were happy, more than happy that, okay, I'm, I'm monitoring my entire environment and getting the notification if something goes down and all. But later on, when Oracle introduced new features that you can maintain your database, you can add your data file, you can um, you can set your, your reactive uh, intention. Let's say if something, uh, uh, something happen, happens, let's say a table space utilization uh, alert came. So what is your reactive option? You can you can set a reactive also that if this database has this level of data files usage or uh, table space usage, add this much space. So reactive action can be configured. Later on, it had evolved to monitor the extra data, Golden Gate and EBS and all that. Then we were very more happier. Okay, now we have the more features. Right, so this is called this is kind of evolvement. More more evolution happened. New things were introduced, and it was it continued to make our life easier. So that was a difference. Uh, not a little bit. It was a huge difference from 12C to 13.5. That the version we are using now. So many things. Yeah, you talk about some target in OEM. So what is actually the concept of target in OEM 13C? 
Right. Okay. So um, OEM basically monitors everything. So everything that OEM is monitoring is a target for OEM. Okay. For example, if OEM is monitoring a host, so host is a target for, for OEM. OEM is monitoring a database. O, the database is a target for OEM. Listener, listener is a target for OEM. EBS, middleware, call anything. Every small to big component that OEM is monitoring, that is a target for OEM. So whenever you know someone says that this target, so target um, could be anything. We should be open to understand what target is it talking about. So if someone says that target is down, so we cannot simply go and check OS that the, the uh, Linux host is down. It's not like that. We need to understand what is the target, what target is down. Could it be, it could be a database listener, okay? Could be OEM agent itself. So it could be anything. So target is a broad meaning. Target is a okay, really so broad meaning. As per my understanding means, uh, means database, host, listener, and suppose data guard. So uh, these are the types of targets we can say. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. That so is also any other targets. things we can manage or tar other types of targets we have in OEM 13C? Right. As I said, OEM is a very sophisticated tool. So it has the capability to monitor non-Oracle targets as well. For example, let's say you have DB2. DB2 is not a, a Oracle uh, software. So DB2 so we can, we is... Can manage. You can manage DB2. Okay. You can manage Microsoft SQL Server. Okay. You can manage, I guess, uh, it has capability to monitor the Postgres as well. I need to double check, but I guess, right? So these things. So it has capability. So what you have to do is you have to have a plugin. So how, so OEM comes up with some default bundle plugin, which is uh, more uh, than sufficient to, to maintain your entire environment. Along with that, if you want to add any uh, additional target, Additional target means Microsoft SQL Server, okay, uh, Windows host and all that, Windows host, yeah, Windows host and the other mm -hmm. stuff. You have to just have a plugin, and that plugin is going to to do it for for you everything. So Exadata ke liye, you have to download a plugin for Exadata. It does not come up as, come up as a default, but keep in mind that if you are going to have a new plugin to monitor a uh, different target that plugin can be uh, paid it's, it's licensed right if you want to monitor a, a sql server and and you want to download the plugin that's going to be a paid plugin so not every plugin is free in oem so before you make any decision make sure that you consult with your licensing team your licensing team will be con will be able to confirm you this thing is paid or not and based on that you can make the decision you should continue or not right so these are all the things Okay, so uh, there is some metric collection things. Uh, I think uh, so. How they used in OEM uh, 13C? Uh, metric collection, yeah, metric collection is a very crucial thing in OEM because every thing, every information, which is uh, collected from the agent in OEM, they stored in a in a form of metric collection because uh, they they are the metric collection. Okay, whatever information it has collected from agent, agent is the kind of uh, your conveyor or medium person which brings all the information from the uh, target host and bring it to the oem and oem is going to store it in the repository database right so agent is the medium person okay. so what all information it is collecting it is collecting in the form of metric okay so metric and based on that metric you can decide uh, the threshold value for monitoring that particular target. Let's say agent has collected all information from the database that you, table space utilization is uh, 87%, 90% currently. Okay. Information has come to OMS in form of metric. We are going to decide that database um, table space should be monitored at 85%. So we define the metric collection threshold value. And based on the threshold value, OEM is going to generate the alert. Let's say the utilization is 90%. We have decided the threshold 85%. So 
So based on the calculation, it's going to send you alert that 85% is the threshold value. Now I'm going to send the alert because the utilization is 90%, right? So that is all calculated and re-engineered, whatever you say, it's, it's happening on the metric side, metric collection side. So it is very important and crucial things that you should know the metric, how it works. So that based on, uh, based on the situation, you can decide uh, your 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 point of action so metric collection is important okay you talk about one word that is plugin so what is actually the concept and importance uh, in oem okay so when oracle created um, oem okay so they had a concept like how we are going to um, capture things so they enabled plugins so plugin is the more most important thing which is and and it's Prime role is to capture things, whatever it is capable of. So let's say Oracle comes with default plugin. Default plugin has a database uh, capturing utility, okay, and middleware and OS related things. They are the default. They come they come in a default package. So <clears throat> it is going to collect all information using the plugin. Plugin is the, is the main role. Agent is a medium, but agent itself is going to use plugin to capture okay. things. Okay. So when we de by default, when we install the agent, it has basic plugins to capture okay. information related to database, OS and middleware. They are the default. What if on that host we have ODA running? What if we have extra data running? Will that plugin be able to capture information, extra data, ODA? No, because this one, this guy does not have capability to capture all those information. In that condition, we have to deploy additional plugin on the agent so that those plugins who are who are especially meant for capturing this information, they should be deployed on the agent and they should start extracting the information from the extra data or ODA or whatever the uh, non-default uh, targets are there, right? So that is the importance of plugin. Secondly, uh, Oracle created special plugins for monitoring non-Oracle products also. Okay, Let, yeah, for example, DB2 you want to monitor in OEM, so there has to be a separate plugin that is licensed for your information. Okay, that should be a licensed uh, product. So you have to deploy, so first you have to deploy the agent, and along with the agent, you have to deploy that particular plugin who should be able to you know, capture uh, the information for a data related thing or DB related, uh, DB2 related thing. So that is the importance of plugin. So we should know, uh, you know, how, how plugin works. We also have option to um, upgrade the plugin. Sometimes Oracle creates some functionality, right? Or uh, let's say, um, I remember when it was OEM 13.3, that time o Oracle had a, Oracle had a challenge. What was the challenge that uh, earlier Oracle was using Flash Player for, uh, you know, creating its diagram, the graph. When we go to database and see top activities, oh, Oracle yeah. was showing the top activities and the uh, the background, uh, you know, technology was used, uh, the the Adobe Flash, Flash Player. Later on, they had some uh, agreement issue with uh, Flash player, maybe the company stopped or they had the disagreement and all that. Then Oracle had a challenge that how we are going to publish the the uh, the graph on OEM because that is the most important for OEM because uh, we have to show the graph. So then Oracle had come up with a new technology that is JET, Java Integrated Technology, something like that. So JET uh, started uh, doing the same job uh, that that the Flash player was doing for OEM. So how we are going to be able to use the JET for that Oracle suggested to upgrade your plugin. Okay, 13.3.2. Then your plugin would be able to, you know, uh, capture those, in, those information and then would be able to publish it in a graphical way. Right. So these things, uh, you know, happened in the past. And, uh, and and that was the importance of the plugin. So we can Another say that uh... is, uh, yeah, can you please hold on one second? One second. I'll be back. Okay, okay. Someone is knocking on the door. One second. Okay. okay.
yeah guys uh, uh, when bashir is coming back so if you guys have any question just post uh, on the chat box uh, so that we can take it at the end of the session from the bashir so this is the good chance to ask the oem questions but don't ask project issues boss okay so he is very busy actually and uh, so let's uh, uh, throw your questions in the chat box uh, so we can take it at the end okay sorry i'm back now no no problem so we can uh, i'm just telling uh, so we can say that uh, for every targets we required uh, specific plugins and we need to install that and uh, if suppose uh, any uh, update is required so we can update the plugin also so that is the conclusion right that's right yeah exactly okay so uh, there is a uh, there is a role based access control in oem i think so how yeah. you set up uh, uh, for to manage permission and privileges i think it is used for per managing permissions and all uh, that's right that's right okay so since we are in a dba field we know uh, the importance of access right for example we can create a a read only access for developers on the database we cannot give the full control to a to a, a developer or any quality testing person so that they should not be able to mess up with the database so um, access and rights that's a, something that you know on the uh, you can provide on a granular level to anyone similarly in oem also we cannot grant the full access to any person Okay, because uh, since we have all the access, we have entire grid infrastructure running on OEM, and we can perform anything, any task on OEM. So it's very risky to 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 grant access, full access to someone, okay, who should not have the access. So, based on the role and what all access they should need, okay, based on that we can provide granular level of access. Someone, since we are monitoring, uh, we have hundreds of databases some of them are production some of them are test someone some of them are you know uh, non prod dr and all that we have a request from uh, development team that i need the access on these many databases for development and all quality testing purpose and all that we gave them the access on those database so we have to decide at what level of access we have to give them we can give them full access based on agreement between the, between the, the uh, database team and the development team what what level of uh, access do they need do they need the full access on development or do they need the read only access on the development or, and all that so oem has uh, you know all these features very granular level of you know access you can provide to the data to the uh, to the other team members when we when they log into the uh, oem they will have only those things available for them so they can play around with that what they are uh, you know eligible for so that is important because you know since you are an admin you should know like who which person should have how much of access right so that granular level role based access is there in oem and we we make sure when we are we are working in real time environment we make sure that people should have limited access so that you know we don't have to be uh, you know bug up later on for any unwanted situation yeah so that is important and that's available we can create admin separate users in oem and they have limited access based on their eligibility so that is there okay <clears throat> uh, one thing uh, you discuss your example of your uh, customer so can we enhance the functionality of oem through scripts or apis yeah yeah it is it is there right that for so that's the next level right let's let's say you have already explored all the options in oem and you think that okay uh, i still have something that is not there in oem so we have um, a metric extension okay so metric extension is something uh, you can create for you know metric extension gives you a lot of scope to play around okay you can create a metric extension for a particular script for a database for os level metric extension for any target you can create a metric extension which is giving you you know extension to your oem 
so but you need to you need to be uh, very good familiar you need to be familiar uh, with metric extension how it works and for what targets we can create and how we are going to set the threshold value for metric extension right so these things secondly you need to be uh, very good you know uh, well versed with functionality in the repository database so what all information is stored on repository they, and we should be good in the scripting we can create a script based on that script using the so so there are a lot of things uh, working together collectively okay so uh, repository database has all the information and then we have a metric extension and then we have scripts based on that scripts the metric extension is going to take action and then we have incident rules also they three four things are working you know collectively to achieve that target so that was the next level things okay so if if really someone wants to uh, you know understand how it works it needs a proper training kind of thing or you have you yourself yourself has to uh, explore more how things work but but first of all you have to understand how oem works and after that yeah. you can go for the extension yeah so your yeah, time is passing fast so from my side uh, there is la one last question uh, what are the benefits uh, of oem uh, for the dbas because dba takes slightly oem uh, i heard so many uh, conferences and all nobody is uh, talking about oem uh, even any conference i didn't see that uh, whether international or national so according to you uh, what is the benefits for the dbas okay that that's a very uh, good question by because i have seen and and the reason was i would not blame any dba or the industry for not using oem earlier because uh, as i said in the beginning that oem was is quite evolving evolution is happening right so earlier days oem was not that great to be discussed upon okay with time when it evolved and it has more functionality more capability now it is becoming the hot kick okay so earlier people did not speak about it but now people have started taking interest in it and you would see nowadays the companies have started demanding oem uh, uh, eligibility and all that okay in coming days you would see that people will be started speaking about oem once they get to know that the, the the quality of oem and you know what all it can do for dbs so your question itself is the answer right because people the dbs they did not explore more on oem so they until until yesterday people used to think that oem is a monitoring tool till then nobody discussed about it but now when they know that this is the functionality and we can utilize it for our our ease then people started taking interest and then oem admin role has been is has been introduced in the market and every resume every jd has oem tagged that we need someone who is familiar with oem and all that so with coming days people will be definitely speaking about oem okay so thanks uh, from my side uh, you had answered my all questions but uh, some question is coming from audience so if you allow can we take that question yeah 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 i, I can see okay so, so ak says what is the difference between 13.4 and 13.5 related to bi report as bi is depreciated in 13.5 how bi report will configure come post upgrade yeah that's that's very interesting question good one okay so uh, until 13.4 bi publisher was already integrated when you install oem 13.4 bi is already there you want it or not it is coming along with the package but most of the people were not using bi bi, BI so i don't know whatever the uh, whatever happened in the in, in oracle mind they they uh, de uh, uh, decommissioned um, bi publisher from 30 in 13.5 but they came up with some other alternative for bi okay so uh, i guess the people the dbs are not those people who are who were actually actually using bi they were not happy with the step but maybe uh, 
they have some alternative right but the people are not happy with that alternative maybe in coming releases or something oracle may may have to come up with the bi report again in 13 uh, 13.5 or point next patch set level or something like that yeah i i hope i as i answered your question okay uh then we have so, next so, 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 sorry to interrupt so we will yeah. not get bi in 13.5 bi report we do not have no we do not have bi in 13.5 we have some alternative but um, uh, but not sure if it is working fine for the people who who really are very good you know uh, good bonding with bi they are not happy with the alternative but yeah 13.5 we do not have bi because 13.4 support is over, uh, so it is difficult to uh, work with 13.4. Uh, yeah, but people are still using 13.4. I don't think support is over for 13.4. 13.3 support is over. 13.4 is still in support because I can see lastly the patch was released. Patch set was released for 13.4. So people who still want to use BI, they can they can still use 13.4. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the next question is from Jakir. Uh, could you please cover licensing part? Yeah, licensing, as I said, licensing is a very broad thing, right? We cannot say that this part is licensed, this part is not licensed. So in in organization, we have a separate licensing team who are very good, uh, you know, with dealing all this part. So as I said, OEM itself is not uh, a licensing thing. You, it's, it's free. We don't need a license to use OEM, but the components that we are we are monitoring through OEM, they are licensed, right? For example, let's say you you want to monitor EBS in OEM, then you need to have a license for using that plugin, OEM uh, EBS plugin, right? So that is licensed. For extra data, you need to have a licensed plugin, right? Similarly, other stuff which are not uh, default, uh, they should be licensed. But for more details, you need to uh, check with your licensing team. They can provide you more details. Yeah. Suhail is asking certification part and how is the opportunities in market for who are skilled in OEM? <laughs> ah, that's a very nice question. Yes. Yes. So, so, so yeah. see, yeah. <laughs> the opportunity in the market is already there. It's not going to be in future. It's already there now. Nowadays, if you go for the interview in market, it is it is there in the in their JD, right? So a, a, all the good good companies they have started looking for the OEM because they do not want to hire a separate OEM admin, right? So they want every DBS to have knowledge of OEM so that they should be able to take care of their OEM and maintain it, right? So uh, the opening is already there. In let's say for example there are five DBS approaching for the same role. You have OEM itself, right? You know OEM, so you have added advantage for for that particular uh, job opening. So it is already there. For certification, yes, there is certification, but um, I guess skill is more important. Certification, nobody is giving preference for OEM certification, but yeah, skill is important. So you need to focus more on the skill gaining. Guys, any other question, please ask quickly because uh, we want to wrap up this session. We are passing one hour. So with fasting, it is difficult to speak actually. So please, guys, if you have any question, just post it or you can speak it quickly. Yeah, yeah. So it, let, let's make it more uh, interactive. Uh, shoot your question, be it small or big, no issues. You can ask questions. See, we, we have the opportunity to ask OEM questions with a Bashir. <laughs> uh, that discuss, Bharat, we will discuss later. Okay, just talk about OEM. So just uh, your queries and your all. Uh, if you want to share your experience, if you are working in OEM, you can open, uh, you can tell us. So that's that's also uh, uh, we can listen from you also, guys. Yeah, please, yeah. quickly response. So those people who are already using OEM and they stuck with something, you need any help, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to help. So that's a uh, kind of extensive help from my side for all the db community who are you who are working on oem so i'll be helping 
what are the yeah, regular hello, hi, yeah yeah just just okay. one thing what are the regular maintenance activities in oem suhel is asking ah it's every quarter the the way oracle releases the patch quarterly patch for uh, the other uh, 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 you know technology for example middleware or database similarly oracle releases a bundle patch embp for oem so every quarter the maintenance is happening was you speaking yeah zakir i guess yeah uh-huh. yeah hello i have this i am yeah zakir hi i'm zakir yeah actually my question is uh, uh, suppose if i want to um, uh, integrate my alerts uh, with the ticketing tool so how can we uh, go with that uh, actually uh right zakir so it's a it's a long process it's not a, sing, a single command or something like that first of all you have to come up with your ticketing tool which ticketing tool are you talking about maybe hana or maybe um, some other right so there are process uh, guidelines how to integrate because both uh, who is representing from hana okay and who is representing from uh, uh, from oem side so both the the dbas both the the admin people have to work collective uh, collectively and there are steps mentioned from oracle side and hana side also right if you want to integrate the ticketing tool with with oem what all the steps have to be taken on hana side and what all the steps have to be taken on oem side so you are responsible for oem because you can perform those actions on oem side but hana you cannot perform the action so hana admin is going to perform the rest of the action so that is how it's a long process so yeah so it's, so you have to understand so when you go for the integration you have to uh go with the doc id which is provided from from oracle and then you have to follow the steps okay yeah thanks bishu thanks guys yeah okay okay so thank you very much guys for joining the sessions and thanks bashir for giving your precious time in ramadan duration with your job so i'm no very thankful uh to you so you have given me the time actually this series i have started and i think the first one was aman paji who was a renowned uh, speaker mentor and database consultant and now uh, you are the second one young energetic oem expert <laughs> in <laughs> database thank you database, <laughs> database consultant and for security reason i will not tell more about you okay so uh, thanks once again and this uh, session uh, this recording uh, my team will upload on uh, my youtube channel that is amat tech we actually rename uh, it was uh, oracle ride uh, uh, earlier it was the name but due to some uh, uh, struggle uh, we changed this uh, actually i want to cover broadly all the technologies so that's why i come up with this name so that's it from my side and most probably next sunday we will bring some another uh, experienced guy uh, uh, who can talk about uh, uh, its expertise and the technology on which uh, he is working or she is working so just wait for uh, the next session so thanks for guys joining and i am stopping and uh, happy weekend and whatever the feedbacks you have you just uh, watch it on youtube channel and support and subscribe so that we can bring more expertise uh, to discuss about the technologies it is not related only for oracle we are open to discuss any technology which is uh, growing in the it industry okay okay Thank so you. thanks and thanks to you also as you conducted this topic thanks thanks speaker Okay thank you thank you Bashir thanks very much for your time thank you and yeah, thank you so much thanks when everyone left i will close uh, the session so bashir you can take a, uh, exit if you want thank you thank bashir you, thank you akman yeah. thank you thanks thank you everyone for making it quite interactive session thank you so much thank you thank you everyone.